What's up YouTube, Mr. Lamacy here, and today we're going to do a deep dive into mazes. I will also share how the Arcane Sanctuary is solved or unsolvably solved in a way. Um, we have all of the information now, everything built out in the most beautiful way. Thank you to Kiranor. So this should be a fun one. So here's title page. Different level types. We have this this is this is your different level types that exist. Your presets, such as your Durns of Hate level three, right? That map is always the exact same map, never changes whatsoever. You have your outdoor maps. These are going to be your maps in Act 2, Act 1, your Cold Plains, your, you know, Far Oasis, whatever, just your outdoor maps. And then you have your mazes. Your mazes are going to be the ones that are getting generated, uh, kind of like your dungeons in there, right? Um, where this right here would be like Glacial Trail or Crystalline Passage or anything like that, right? Where it's generating from these tiles. Most of them are going to be mazes, right? All mazes are generated from tiles. And I'll probably paint together maybe a couple things as well, but we'll see. So when I talk about tiles, this is what I'm talking about right here. So I've talked in many videos about tiles in the game, but this is what I mean. This is a tile. It has its four sides. And then this tile would be facing to the top right. Okay, because even though you enter this way, you basically look at where the the part of the tile is that doesn't have a wall where it's where it's not dead ended essentially there so this exits to the top right so there you can see is a second tile that is being built on to the first tile right here and this tile now has two openings here and then you could build a third tile Right? So when the game is generating, it goes boom, it places this down, then it places another tile, then it places another tile. And here we can see this is broken down into what the tiles would look like. This, uh, the dark lines represent not an exit, and the green lines represent an exit. This is purely from the tile. So for instance, this tile has three exits and one non exit, right? So where it places where it can attach. It goes north, south, west, east, like that. So north is always going to be kind of your top right, and then it'll go around from there. And the tiles are always on a grid. This is important to note. Even if it doesn't feel like it, the tiles are always going to be like this on a grid. So sometimes they're not perfectly square, but they still are, you can see, they don't take up the whole part of it, but they'll still always connect and everything from there. So, tiles also have various options. For instance, this right here is looking for a tile that has two dead ends and two openings to the north and to the east. You could call this a jail northeast tile. This now gives you Either this tile, this tile, this tile, this tile, right? There are four tiles right here. And you can see, you know, what they look like on the minimap as well. There are four different tiles that all of them will satisfy this requirement. So when the game says, give me a tile like this, where the south and the west are not exits and north and east are, it will pick from one of these tiles. You also have thematic tiles. This is the thematic tile right here. Thematic tiles we'll get to in a little bit, but just know that that is a, a type of tile. So same sort of thing here. Tomb Northeast has the same idea, and I'm sure you guys recognize some of these tiles in your tombs where you're coming up and, oh, okay, this one has this, this is like this, this is like this, this is like this, and again, you also have a thematic tile that exists. And I'm sure you guys remember this one. It has the rack in it and stuff as well, right? So there are thematic tiles again 
here. There's thematic tiles all throughout the game, of course. You have your cave, um, and this is a great place to show you where there's some large tiles, right? Look at how big this tile is for a cave northeast. It's massive. So a lot of people would think like, if you compare the sizes of the tiles, you would think, oh, this is one tile, this is one tile, this is one tile. No, this whole thing is a single tile. This whole thing is a single tile. This is like the size of like nine of the other tiles put together, right? So there's some big tiles. And this is why the Den of Evil is three tiles because you have this connected to whatever entrance or whatever, and then a third one here. And that's three. All you have is your three tiles. So the caves have some big ones. And again, you have your thematic tile as well. And this is where you have the shamans, right? You get the, the shaman group right in here on this tile. And of course, continuing on, here's the crypt and it has its thematic tile as well. Now, what I just was saying, tiles come in different sizes. This, you might have seen, is a single tile. There's your cable too, right? This is one tile. So a lot of people, again, would think the size of it is the same size as this, but it's not. It's much bigger, right? So you can see various tile sizes. This is a, a single tile as well, and this is way smaller than this. Okay, so you need to know the sizes of the tiles you're working with. So that breaks down tiles pretty well, right? Now let's talk about random generation. This game uses a pseudo random number generator which creates seemingly random sequences of numbers. It bases it on the initial state, which is your like seed or your initial state of uh, the tile and stuff as well. And the sequence of numbers determines the decisions during level generation. Now this part even goes a little bit above my head. So I'll explain this as best as I can, but here you go. There's some, some states and determinations and everything. And this is showing right here what the difference is from having like a single digit change, how much that can change so much more, right? So by literally changing this one to a two and doing whatever masking and whatever stuff, you now are getting these very, very different changes. So this is just showing how all of that can be adjusted. So it uses a multiply with carry random generator. Characters have a 32-bit seed. So this is how many seeds there are. And it's random for levels generated with character seed, base seed, level ID, and then this gives you your level seed. So these pieces combined will give your level seed, which will then tell you what type of level you're going to have. Plain and simple, right? You got it? Because even again, this is a little bit above me. But level ID is cool. Level ID is for each different level. Um, it's going to have a specific level ID and that's going to be brought in. Um, but this is how, you know, having the character seed is I was going to ask something if this that can't have that influence. YouTube, but I noticed he's using the YouTube voice, so I know it will be. It's the same voice. Thanks, Llama. And then this, I believe, is showing different kinds of how the level seed will then adjust. Potentially. So, level seed, level ID plus base seed makes levels independent of each other right there, um, which is great. Now, maze generation steps. Here is getting out of the numbers, the stuff that was more confusing to me and more into the piece that I understand again, which is how the maze will actually generate. So what happens first is it will place the first tile, which is sometimes a special tile, then it will place a square, only on some levels. It will grow the level. 
and then it will place specials, which are going to be things like your exits and things like that. Then it will replace up to not two non-special tiles with theme tiles, which I talked about before. And then pick the actual tile layout for each tile. Don't worry, we'll go through this whole process. Also, it's good to note that if it cannot place specials, it will replace, it will not only uh, do a replace, it will add a new tile and then add the special onto that. So you can actually have levels be larger than they should kind of be because it's adding a new tile on to allow for it to place the special. Additionally, in growing the level, um, it will also do a random merge sometimes if two sides are touching, and we'll show that. So let's go look at the underground passage on this seed, and that is in hex, so just know if you convert that to, to uh, decimal, then you'll be able to use that use this seed and get this map so it places the first tile boom now it's going to grow the level and it grows it out this way here's how it exits and it grows to there right now it's going to grow the level again now it's going to grow the level again so it's grown this level four times now it's deciding if it's going to do a merge or not on this part of the level it decides merge is complete. Yes. Then it grows the level again, grows the level again, decides on a merge. Nope, no merge. Now it will grow the level again because it's just adding on. Now we have the desired number of rooms that we want, which is seven. It's going to have this special south entry and it will look and see there are no tiles that match this. What do I mean by this? I mean three dead ends, and then one open. None of these satisfy that. You have one that faces this way, one that faces this way. These ones do not because this decided to merge. So it's going to add it as a new tile and attach it rather than place it on one of the existing tiles. Now it will do the same thing here. Is there a matching tile for your um, special tile here yes there is right down there so it'll place it in that spot now it'll do the same thing do you have this nope there's no matches and it will go ahead and add this now of course it could add this here it could add this here it can add it in wherever it wants but it has to add it in a place where it can be accepting of that so now it's done that let's do tile selection so now it's just picking from, like we said, it's looking for one that's dead here and open here. There will be like three or four tiles of this. It'll pick one of those. Then we'll go here. It'll do the same thing. And you'll note that this is picking from that same exact one. Then it goes here. It looks for one that's dead ended on two sides, but open there. It looks for one that's open here and here and dead ended there. It looks for one that's dead end here and these three are open and that. And boom, you now have your dark wood map created. But now it will do the thematic selection where it will come here and say, let's change this tile to a themed tile and let's change this tile to a themed tile. Remember, up to two tiles, it will change to themed tiles. And these tiles are the ones we know that have the shaman groups in them with the dead ends. Those are themed tiles that you'll find in the, under in the underground passage. The various um, areas have the different theme tiles. And thus, this is your finished tile set right here um, where it's going to build and you have an underground passage. There it is without the grid. So again, it can be a little hard to see it without the grid, but when you're able to grid it, it makes way more sense. So special placement allows for map reading. Specials are always placed in the same order. For instance, the jail level one places the entry, then it will rotate, place the waypoint, then it will rotate and place the exit. This is something that I do wanna go back here really fast and show is the special is south entry. Then it will always place cave level, the cave or whatever it's called in the underground passage, level two underground passage level two, and that will always be turned one and then placed. 
and then the exit will always be turned one and then placed. So it's just rotating through north, west, east, south, west, north, southeast, whatever, northeast, southwest, over and over and over again. And this is how it's just generating it, which is then, like he says right here, allows us to have knowledge because we know where, what way the tile needs to be facing because it's always going to just be turning. So again, the entry is placed first as the special tile, then the waypoint gets placed. So that's why jail level one's there. Then the exit gets placed, right? And same thing, level two of the jail, you're placing the entry, then you're placing the uh, tile where whatever the unique boss's name that I'm somehow forgetting exists the cold, enchanted, tainted, then it's placing the exit. On level three, it places the entrance, and then it rotates one time and places the exit because there isn't that extra special tile in there. So this is why maps pit spawn. Thank you. Um, so it will always choose a random direction first to pick, and then it just advances in that direction for the next special tile just moving one around in a clockwise direction. Um, for some levels, Catacombs places entry as first tile, not as a special. So here is your Catacombs, your entry, and then you have your waypoint and your exit. And this is the ways that they're facing. So this is a north facing, an east facing, a south facing, and a west facing. And as we know, since it rotates, if you have this, you'll have this, and then you'll have this. If you have this, you'll have this, and then you'll have this. If you have this, you'll have this, then you'll have this. And here you can see we have lines showing exactly because it's just rotating one time, right? Special placements allow for map reading. Again, this just allows us to see, okay, this is uh, facing towards the east. Thus, this will face towards the south. Thus, this will face towards the west. Pretty simple. Again, this is map reading uh, and how we look at it. But of course, this also makes it difficult because if we go to this right here, we would, you know, look and say, okay, I want to look, you know, this direction and I want to go to the right, I want to go to the left. Um, but you won't always find it in that way. So this is the jail. And normally I would think that going down to the bottom right here would lead me to the exit of the jail. But actually I have to go all the way around because I have to make three rights, which is the same as making a left. So again, this is why in map reading, we don't always get it right, because all we know is this tile is facing this way, but we don't know if we have to go three lefts or if we just need to take a right off of it, or three rights or just take a left off of it, excuse me. Um, here's another good example of how it functions, same idea. And those are backwards maps. Um, specials give a tile orientation, but not always location. So again, this means you have to go back and around rather than normally a lot of times you'd come out here and just take a left and it would be right there. So here's your ideal towers right here. You come in the tower and you just go left and you're at the exit. Come in tower, go left. Come in the tower, just go left. And here is an example of a tower where you have to go backwards because again, it's all about orientation, not always location. Plain and simple. Here's another one. This is a terrible hell tower because you would go here, over here, come up here, over there, and then eventually make your way all the way back to figure out it was a turnaround map. Now, the arcane sanctuary is again solved in an unsolvable way. The way the Arcane Sanctuary works is the starting wing is determined. There are four options. Then the level is built. 60 RNG advances happen. And then the special summoner tile is placed. Okay? So it builds out the whole Arcane Sanctuary before it places the summoner tile. And why this is really rough and means that it's pretty much unsolvable is 
60 RNG advances are going to occur on the seed. Which means you basically have no chance whatsoever. Right? There is basically no chance whatsoever. And this is, uh, you know, your summoner and wing. Um, you have your teleporter, your zigzag, your flat, and your straight. These are also always in this order. Teleporter is the f first, and then zigzag is to the right, and then flat is across from teleporter, and then the straight path um, is there. I actually call the, the teleporter and the straight is how I... I guess flat and teleporter are fine. The way he, he calls it is this, but... Um, but, yes, again, this is the important thing to note. With these 60 RNG advances, it basically means that there is nothing you can observe within the game leading up to the Arcane Sanctuary that can help give you what you need to know to know where it is. That is just the problem, right? So if I go really fast into paint, for instance, the... Um, Lower crust, or the, yeah, lower crust. Let me find it really fast. So the cold planes. Uh, is level ID three, bin three, and that equals B one one, which equals zero B. Zero, 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 one, one. Okay. And then Laura Kurast, level ID 79, bin 79, equals zero, B, one, zero, zero, one, 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 one. So, This is missing leading zero. There we go. So what does this mean right here? We're actually seeing that the cold planes and the lower crossed have similarities in their two lowest bits. They are both one one right here, which potentially could mean this right here is why the, the way that the uh, you exit your cold planes and the way that you exit your lower kurost are related, right? Because they share these lower bits, that potentially gives some reasoning for why there is relation right there. That's just like an interesting thing and that's based off your initial piece and whatever. Um, but, What's happening again uh, when you're getting to the Arcane Sanctuary is you are having whatever your ideas for it and then you're advancing it 60 times where if we go, if we went all the way back to that, to that very start where it, you know, it's like, okay, now it's like zero B, one, nine, and D, you know, whatever, right? And then it, right? It does this so many times in its advancing of its RNG that by the end of it, the 60 times, that is going to be your unique piece for that arcane of where the summoner tile gets placed. Thus, we just have no, no clue. Plain and simple, you're just not going to have a clue of where the summoner is going to be because it just takes too long. If for some reason that tile got placed way earlier, there is a chance. Ignore what I was writing. Pretend it was Hex. Um, so, level distance. Thank you, Muppet. Level distance is a great way to describe the amount of tiles that are being placed and how long it is going to be to get from entrance to exit. So, for instance, right here, this is four tiles. This is, like, not so much a... Uh, really technical term is uh, something made up. So it's four tiles of distance to get to the exit. This one is six tiles and this one is eight tiles. This is purely how many tiles you're having to go through to get to the exit. So something that you'll notice is there is a big variety within these maps. You'll also note 
that there are different amounts of tiles that are used for spawning this underground passage. And that's because, again, this one had to add on more tiles to fulfill its special tile needs, right? So if we go and look at some math, um, this is act one distance distribution, summing the tiles of the underground passage, the jail level one, two, three, and the catacombs level one, two, three for all 4,294,967,296 seeds that exist. The shortest that you see is 13 tiles of runtime. And the longest that you see is 58 tiles of runtime. And this is mostly just showing RNG that you'll see within your own runs. But of course, for speedrunners, a large, large variance that you could find. Because for instance, this is four times as far, essentially, potentially just for if you're running. And it looks like it averages around 31 to 32 tiles of length. So this is the one of the shortest examples right here. This is showing all of the different maps from your underground passage, which you can see is literally right across. You just go boop, boop, and you're right there to your jail right there to your catacombs where you have the exit literally right off of here. Then this one's a turn off right there. Um, this one is right across for a jail. Here's your jail level three, where you just go there, there. And then here you come down there and go to here. So if you got this as in a speed run, oh, and you ran it perfectly, it would be beautiful, right? This is like a God map for it. And this is showing with the arrows, all of those directions. That would be the fastest. The odds are, how many times do we say? 38 out of 4 billion, 4.3 billion to get, but yeah, it happens 38 times. And then again, it goes you know, up increasingly, right? So even to get a map that has 24 tiles close, which you're not even always gonna run it correctly is only 2% of the time. Okay, moving on. And this would be one of the two longest maps. And this is, look how long this jail is. This is if you run it perfectly. Look how long this underground passage is if you run it perfectly. That's your next jail. This is your one catacombs. This is your second catacombs. This is your third catacombs. This is your jail over here, your level three. Brutal. Now that's a map. Now, this is the llama. Is there a map that we can make into the llama? Let's see, if we could grid something out like this, and then of course turn it at the proper orientation, and then map it in, the Hell Tower 1 in this seed is the llama. Beautiful. And that, my friends, concludes Maze Generation in Diablo 2. This is as boiled down as you can get it. Now, is there a way to actually solve the arcane sanctuary? Yes. And the way is, if you have a seed reverser, where as you play through the game, you can literally input the maps that you are running and the tiles that you're getting, it can slowly work it down where before you got to the Arcane Sanctuary, it could tell you exactly what seed you're running 
And then from there, tell you which direction the Arcane Sanctuary exists. Is this possible? Yes. Is this a lot of work to cheat? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. And at that point, you might as well just map hack. You know? You might as well just map hack. How do you determine what counts as left, right when the tile seems to have two plus exits, e.g. tiles, tombs? So you are asking, I enter, and it's like this. And here is my entrance. This is the direction that it's facing. So you just want to look at like that piece of it. Okay. This is your, your tile that you're looking at. Right. So that's front. So, with that being said, I hope that this was uh, quality. Gave you some information. You learned some things. Again, Karenor, thank you very much for doing the deep dive and rebuilding the map generation sequence software. Now learn to program all. Exactly. You did a fantastic job. And uh, yeah, I hope I explained it well enough. I know I've struggled a tiny bit through some of the like numbers pieces. Got a little bit, a little bit rough, but that being said, don't forget to like and subscribe YouTube. Mwah! Kisses to you all. Peace, everybody.